I welcome the participants. Uh, in the stream Gender in Development, today I will be taking a session on discourses on gender in ancient India and uh, the status of women in Vedic era will be discussed. Subsequently, various other stages will be discussed. Uh, historians have uh, classified women's life in traditional Indian society into the following stages. The Vedic stage, Epic stage, Upanishad stage, age of the sutras and age of the Rajputs that is Bhagavat uh, Chandra Upadhyaya's 1986 uh, as per the quoting of this. In the pre-Vedic age, it is believed that Dravid culture was more popular in practice. Ideals of pregnant women, women wearing headgears, etc. imply that women were treated with lot of honor during this time. The reproductive function of women was held very high in esteem and they came to be worshipped as denoting the entire universe. During the Vedic period, we come, uh, all the information that we get is from Patanjali and Katyayan. Women enjoyed a very high and equal status in the early Vedic period and, Vedic, uh, and also in uh, ancient India. It is also stated that much before the commencement of the civilization, matriarchy was very much in vogue across many parts of India. Women was a symbol of strength or Shakti and generosity. She had a share in property as a daughter and freedom to choose her husband. The status of wife was also very high and sacred. When we come to power and authority, women in the Rig Vedic period were very close to men in terms of holding power and authority. Youth, they used to take care that the fire in the young never gets extinguished and it got they got educated like her brothers learned the same arms, war warfare, etc. Like her brothers, participated in yoga, yagya and yagnas like her husband and took part in welfare that is and ran behind the enemies. Shuns the veil that is parda and often shows her face while participating in sabhas or taking part in the yagnas. Women were also the saints and uh, yoga performers. Uh, they were uh, like uh, women like Gosha, La Lopa Mutra, Sachi, Polomani, and uh, Apala. These are some of the names, Maitri, Gargi, who perf used to perform Yagya. And they had authority over many mantras chanting of the Rig Veda period. The Aryans, Aryan women used to recite the mantras with equal devotion and respect as they did when reciting the mantras written by the male saints. Sachi Pulomi, another woman sage, says, just as the sun rises to the center of the sky, every, even my luck is going high. There, are, there were no child marriages and women married at an adult age and they had a complete freedom of choosing the husband or the groom. Dharma Shastra of Apastama, that is 450 to 350 BC, there were also kingdoms that boasted of a Nagarvadhu, who was the most beautiful woman. She was respected as goddess, but was treated as a courtesan. Brahma Vadinis, there are a number of illustrations of how women scholars like Gargi and Maitre, who tackled sage Yagna Valika with the knowledge on Vedas. Ghosha studied and spent much time in chanting Vedas and got married at a very late age after accomplishing all her uh, education or the knowledge of this Yagya. Dharma Sadhana is another aspect of uh, which gives the status of woman. The role of wife was very important as an unmarried man's worship is not going to please the devas, it was considered proper to have a wife and then on Guru uh, Ashtrama Dharma. Then Sadhya Vadhu were those who did Ved, Ved Adhyan in childhood and in youth as far as possible. They got married after they attained the puberty. Brahma Vadinis were those who remained unmarried for long, long time and engaged in Ved Adhyana. Yagna Adhikarini, according to 
आर्ट लेकर सम यज्ञ यूज टू बी मेंट एक्सक्लूसिवली टू बी परफॉर्म्ड बाय द वुमेन सीथ आज्ञन रुद्र अज्ञन रुद्र बाली एक्सेट्रा एंड दिस वॉज दे वर द वेरी अकम्पलिश्ड वुमेन हु इज़ टू परफॉर्म दिस यज्ञ इन द एज ऑफ सूत्रस वी फाइंड दैट मैन स्टार्टेड टू चेंज द बाउंड्रीज ऑफ द मेट्रियाकल सोसाइटी एंड कंस्ट्रक्टेड दोज ऑफ द पेट्रियाकल वन दे ऑल्सो स्टार्टेड टू ब्रिंग एज होस्टेज वुमेन बिलोंगिंग टू अदर कास्ट एंड कम्युनिटीज वी गेट अ नंबर ऑफ रेफरेंसेज अबाउट मैनी वाइव्स ऑफ कॉमन मैन अकॉर्डिंग टू अनदर रेफरेंस द वुमेन ब्रॉट फ्राम कॉन्कर्ड किंगडम एज स्लेव्स एंड सर्वेंट्स they came to be mortgaged by the gamblers and when they lost their in the game women came to be taken as their dasi by the winners as per the grihya sutra all sanskar held and which took place for men only with the chanting of mantras mantropades upanayan ved studies or marriage etc sanskar of ashrama life became associated with the man and his personality development all should happen to him but for the women all her sanskara that is women's sanskara can be without mantra like jataka in childhood naming ceremony chuda karma etc without any mantra although she was called yoga pavitni no thread was used only a small cloth was put on her waist from left to right in manu dharma shastra there is very interesting recitation manu thinks of a woman as one of one who does not deserve any freedom all her dharmic achievements philanthropy freedom are irrelevant but he felt that all the sanskar of men need to happen to women too and with mantra as per manu's recitation marriage itself is upanayan upanayan to a woman by serving her husband well she gets everything to herself too women should not conduct any any yag even if they did brahmins should not attend them watsayan has a very important role in the gender studies quoting him he quoted to have strengthened the patriarchal tendencies and subjugated women it stated that if the king sees any beautiful lady he should somehow appeal to her get her to his palace offer liquor liquor get her intoxicated and then rape her there is another very important term that is androcentrism the original vedic ideas were recorded interpreted discussed translated and established in society only by men this fact is referred to as androcentrism which is viewing the world from a male perspective while women are viewed and treated as passive object rather than active subject of the history there are two schools of thought which happened at the time one considered women as equal to men the other holds them as an object of hatred manu stated that where the women relatives live in grief the family soon wholly perishes but where they are not they are not unhappy the family ever prospers that is a quotation which is given in sanskrit which i have translated in english yagna valikas they are the women according to them women are the embodiment of all divine virtues on earth for example soma bestowed all his purity on them gandharva has given them sweetness of sweet of speech and fire has showered all his brilliance to make them the most attractive creature now this epic that is ramayans and ramayana and mahabharata what has been the status of women present statements about only lofty ideals of womanhood the latter considered women as the pillars of social organization and center of domestic life it also held that a man is inferior to women before whom he should bend his will he should uh, serve and adore her in some contexts that there could be no more or higher sinful object than a woman she is the root of all evil and most sinful of all is the creatures women is like a burning fire 
she is also an illusion that is maya and like the sharp edge of a razor so there has been always a contradictory statement even in the epics ramayana and mahabharata there has been illustrious examples of kunti gandhari blindfolded draupadi stripped publicly hidimba married bhim and urvashi the celestial maiden these are some of the most powerful women that have been stated in the history beyond manu if we see then we mentioned kautilya and varamahira kautilya who believed that whoever expects good things to occur should not trust a woman or have belief in their deeds then astronomers or astronomy that is varamahira he gave in his bruhat samiti he provided proof of how strong women was during his time with examples and quotations he expresses appreciation for the good character of women as well as sense of considering them as equal to men every month the bad qualities are pushed out of her body in the form of menstruation when we come to buddhism it is argued that it gave women followers that is vikshunis equal right and opportunities there is also an opinion that buddha did not have a defined or definite standard and clarity about women issues his disciple ananda is quoted to have insisted on this separation that is of male and female followers and beliefs like nari narika ke dari or a woman is the root of hell that strong among hindus are found in buddhist literature also in jataka time that is kunala jataka went to the extreme and quoted women as by nature wicked and somehow taken birth to destroy men a male role in jataka story by name anithi gandha is somebody taken birth only to destroy women just as the birth of parshuram to destroy the kshatriyas jainism the jain culture or jainism also did not give women any high status they were considered as taken sinners in the past who took birth as female only because of the past deeds the gambara jainism stated that there is no moksha for women after death in case of women desires to attain moksha she has to be born again as a man in a next life and swetambara jainism on the contrary declares for a woman moksha is attained after her death there is no need to be reborn as uh, given in in order to obtain moksha as per slokas slokas also uh, or slokas like women and mud as they are kept or maintained a girl born is like a wound on the body a girl given away in marriage is uh, to the kin or family is like a wound and these sayings reaffirmed faith in the patriarchal system of family that is prevalent in the society there is also a very interesting gender critique of eight forms of marriage there as it uh, prevailed at the time the eight marriage forms are brahma devya arsha prajapati asura gandharva pechase and rakshasa in seven forms of marriage marriage is an arrangement made by men in patriarchy as patriarchy operates jointly with religious values to oppress women and to subject them to cultural social and religious norms in at least five ways dharma clearly and clarifies the outlines and the roles of males and the females in terms of division of labor leadership kinship and family life this has been gender consequences as the male is the leader of the family and the chief beneficiary of the practice of dharma in brahma marriage the brahma form characterize uh, characteristics marriages as a father's prerogative to give his daughter to a suitor he has approved of on his on her behalf the brahma form is the most popular because it rests on the ideals promoted by parents about the value of education the reputation of families maintenance or maintaining varna purity of the same class and caste and the parents rights 
to choose that is always correct. Devi marriage. The Devi form of marriage is based on the principle of sacrifice. Father seeks young Brahmin suitor for their daughters. The Brahmin, a priest who is usually approached while he is conducting a sacrificial prayer, is offered the daughter as a wife and as an item of sacrifice. In other words, offering a daughter is constituted as the ultimate sacrifice a parent can make to the to uh, appraise or to please gods or to fulfill his karmic duty. Arsha marriage. In the Arsha form of marriage, the arrangement is once again a decision between men. The daughter is given away as a bride to a sage or a rishi, that is a holy man, in exchange of two cows. The groom may or may not have suitable qualifications to be a husband, which appears to be immaterial to the bride's family. The exchange of cattle for a bride is thus an economic transaction that ignores the future aspirations and desires of a girl and commodifies families. Another very interesting form of marriage is Asura marriage. In this unsuitable or undesirable suitor are accommodated in the Asura form of marriage. In this form, a man purchases a wife by paying an enormous sum of money to her family, kinship and to the bride. The father gives his daughter away in exchange for the acquisition of wealth. According to Cain, this form of marriage is practically a sale of gift for money, a sale of a daughter for exchange of money's worth. Another form is Prajapatiya marriage. In this fifth form, Prajapatiya by comparison, it is uh, the bride's father who actively seek a marriage partner for his daughter. Through marriage, the daughter becomes a wife and thus a position of her husband. When she is disposed of by her father, her future is determined by the impulse and desires of her husband and his family. The Gandharva marriage. The Manu Smriti uh, describes the Gandharva marriage as the voluntary union of maiden and a lover. In the verse, Manu Smriti says that such a union springing from desire and his intercourse for its purpose, ignoring the fact that in all marriages there is an expectation to consummate the relationship. This was the most common form of marriage in Vedic times. A verse in the Atharva Veda suggests that parents usually allowed a daughter to select her lover. According to Manu Smriti, however, the Gandharva marriage may be suitable for making for males from warrior, military and administrators and royal families, suggesting that the free choice is reserved for the upper castes only. Rakshasa marriage. The Rakshasa form of uh, bride abduction follow, following an attack on the bride's kinship who have been slain or beaten and wounded. The women are do doubly victimized through the loss of family and captured as prizes of violent conquest. The acquisition of rights in this way mean that there is no recourse to a family that has been slain and fear of violence against surviving relatives prevalent any act of agency. Last is the Pechas marriage. In this Pechas form occurs through planned dishonorable means or opportunities available to engage in premarital sexuality or sexual act with a female. The female is raped when she is asleep, intoxicated or in disordered state of mind. This can be compared to the modern description of date rape. The excessive value attached to virginity and purity makes a girl extremely vulnerable to exploitation by dishonorable men and abandonment by her own family. As we see the status of marriage in uh, the outline of the historical, uh, with the historical fact, we find that the low status of women is not accidental, as is evidence in Manusmriti, which can be traced that women are described as weak and impure. The Mahabharata also declares that women should never remain unmarried. However, women have not always been depicted as bad and unholy in Rig Veda. It is much later in the age of epics and Purana that the position of women became vulnerable 
to the toxicity of patriarchal dominance. The temptation of freedom was most often tempered by sanctions that followed, that is banishment, ostracization and punishment. There are some arguments that an individual act of resistance is not advisable. Collective resistance, whether passive or active, has greater potential to change the society and social norms to improve women's life. Furthermore, those women who engage in risky resilience tactics may become victims of honor killings, which are mainly directed at women for refusing to marry one's first cousin or wanting to choose the groom of their own choice or wanting to have groom of their own choice. So this has been a historical sequences that I have drawn through the Vedic period, the epic, the Manu and various uh, Katyayan and other periods that I have given you trying to trace what has been the real status of women coming from very high to subsequently lowering down the status of women. Now I think this is going to be a very, this will be, this has been an interesting session in order to understand what has been the, uh, uh, the status of women in the historical consequences. I want to thank all the participants for listening to this historical status of women in India.